Hey, so before this video begins, I have an important announcement to make. Uh, the JH Show now has its own YouTube channel, and we will be streaming from that channel for all future live streams of the JH Show. So go and check us out there and subscribe to get updated on when we go live for the JH Show. On to the video! Hello, future Kylie. Today is February 15th, 2019. And I was gonna discontinue this series, but apparently, people like it, so I have to keep doing it! Also, this episode is not scripted, so let's see where this goes. Kylie, lately you've been getting into the Zelda games. Uh, I started you off with Skyward Sword, which was a good choice because it's the easiest 3D Zelda. And you seem to be having a good time, and showed interest in Breath of the Wild when I recently got a Switch. So I let you play, and oh boy, um... How do I put this nicely? You can't move and move the camera at the same time. But you did manage to progress a little bit, and I think you beat the first shrine. But thinking about that got me thinking about some of the problems with the Zelda franchise in general. So we're going to talk about some issues that people have with the games and why that's a thing. Let's go! So let's address the elephant in the room and... That being Skyward Sword. A lot of people don't like Skyward Sword because it's really linear and doesn't offer a lot of variety as far as gameplay. I don't really think that's fair, to be honest. I don't know. I have thoughts about Skyward Sword. I really like the game. It was my first 3D Zelda that I got and the first one that I beat, I think. But people really didn't like it. But we have to keep in mind that it's basically the Wii U of Zelda games. It introduced a lot of important mechanics that we love about Breath of the Wild, like the stamina meter and collecting items. So Skyward Sword, even if it wasn't a great game, was an important stepping stone to what Breath of the Wild became. Nintendo sort of stuck with the, the artsy style that Skyward Sword kind of went for, uh, leaning away from the more realistic that it was um, trying to do with Twilight Princess. We eventually got the masterpiece that is Breath of the Wild. I mean, Skyward Sword's story is good. People overlook that a lot. Is It's one of the most engaging stories of any of the Zelda games. Now let's talk about some problems with Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild isn't a perfect game. It does have its issues. For example, rain is the most obnoxious thing in the world. I just, I hate the rain so much. And we can't forget that even though Breath of the Wild's map is humongous, the quests still have the mundane go to this place and do this thing. Which is a problem with all 3D adventure open world games, but just... Uh, just some of the side quests, man. They're either really s easy or they're stupid. And it's the worst. That's most of the problems about Breath of the Wild summed up. Um, but let's talk about some problems, or some just interesting things, rather, about uh, Breath of the Wild in general. So, part of its unique charm is that it doesn't explicitly tell you what to do every second of the game. And so that leaves the player with a lot of, you know, agency, and they can decide where to go and how to get there. The game sort of presents possibilities, but it's up to you how you do it, ultimately. I'm not used to that from a Zelda game, and so... For me, it's kind of a it's kind of a wake-up slap, but I also enjoy it at the same time. I don't really see the point in horses in Breath of the Wild. Like, sure, the taming system works a little bit more like Minecraft's taming system, but, like, do you need a horse if you can just fast travel everywhere? What's the point of a horse? <laughs> like, really? Next week, I'll be talking about something or other. But for now, Kylie, I'll be back with more next week.